Now that all the desired transients have been detected, we are ready to start the quantization process. Make sure the drum objects for all drum tracks are selected and press the Split at Transients button. This will split all of the objects at the AQ marker positions. Next, we need to decide on the correct quantized value, so click on the Grid drop down menu of the AQ wizard to browse through the selection of QGrid presets. In my example I have chosen a straight 16th Q grid as I want to hard quantize the drums. Also included in the Q grid list is a subfolder of MPC groove patterns which may be worth experimenting with and can yield some interesting results. You can also create and save your own grooves. Notice also that any changes made from this grid menu will be reflected in the window below and the blue vertical lines will adapt to give you a visual representation of the loaded groove. These settings can also be fine-tuned using the Q Thresh and Q Window faders in combination with the Swing, Soft Q and Offset controls. So you are by no means limited to hard quantized settings. To return the settings to their default values, simply click the Default button. Once you've loaded your preferred QGrid setting, press the Quantize Slice Positions AQ button and the slices will snap to the QGrid. After quantizing, there will be some gaps between slices at certain positions due to the fact that the quantized slices have been shifted in time. To remove any gaps, press the Remove Object Gaps button. This action will automatically add crossfades as well. The default is Insert Audio from the next slice's front, which usually does the job. There is also an option to remove gaps by time stretching, although I tend to use the first method. Providing you have used the correct quantized setting, your drum part should now sound a lot tighter. If you're not happy with the results, just click the Reset Quantization button at the bottom of the AQ wizard and try another quantized setting. In some circumstances it may be necessary to quantize the drum part in sections. For example, you may find that one part works better with 1 8 quantized values, but the other part with 1 16 So if that is the case, split the objects and work on them as separate sections. Double click between markers to set the range between markers. Now double click in the lower half of the grid and marker bar. This will select a single object in that range. Double click again and all the objects will be selected in that range. Then press T to split all of the objects. Now when you double click between the subsequent markers, all objects below that range will be automatically selected. So press T again to split the objects at the range borders. 
Then detect the kick and snare transients for the individual sections and quantize using our chosen grid. The Consolidate Transients button is an optional function and is intended to reduce the number of splits after slicing. For example, if the kick and snare both hit on the same beat, the chances are they will not be 100% aligned. The setting in the time window determines if these markers will be consolidated and is user editable. The default is 20 milliseconds, meaning that if two hits fall within a 20 milliseconds time window, the markers will be consolidated. In this example, the snare is around 5 milliseconds behind the kick drum. When I press the Consolidate Transients button, all markers within that time window are consolidated, meaning they become time aligned. Consolidation is always based on the leftmost marker. So when I use the split at transients command, only a single split will occur instead of the two splits had the consolidate transients command not been used. Now when I carry out the quantize operation, the kick will be quantized and the five millisecond offset between the kick drum and the snare will be retained. If you're going to experiment with consolidate transients, it's probably worth a being between two different versions one without consolidation and one with consolidation, to gauge how much it affects the final output. Once AQ operations are completed, it's a good idea to glue the split objects together track by track. Select the objects and use the hotkey Ctrl plus Alt plus G or right click on an object and choose Glue Objects from the context menu. Gluing is actually the same as freezing, so this can be undone at any time. Just open the object editor and untick the Freeze checkbox. To unfreeze multiple objects, Select the objects and make sure the Apply to All box is ticked. Then untick the Freeze button. All the objects will then be unglued. Currently you can't add, delete or adjust AQ markers from within the VIP, although there is some basic marker editing functionality in the Wave Editor. Shift double click on an object to open the Wave Editor. You can also open the Wave Editor by right-clicking on an object and selecting Wave Editing from the context menu. If you mark a range in the VIP, that range should be transferred when you open the Wave Editor. Also, if you position the Play Cursor in the VIP, the Play Cursor position should also be reflected in the Wave Editor. You'll notice that the Wave Editor even displays markers which are not displayed in the VIP. This is because the AQ markers in the VIP are filtered out by the sensitivity setting. To move a marker, place the mouse cursor over the marker until it turns to a double-headed arrow. Then left-click and drag. To remove a marker, left click on the marker to select and press the delete key. At the time of making this video, it's not yet possible to manually add audio quantize markers from within the Wave Editor. Using drum samples to reinforce the recorded drums is an effective production technique. This can be achieved easily in Samplitude Pro X. Once you have quantized the audio, you can generate a MIDI file from the transients. Although this process must be carried out before the objects have been glued back together. I'm selecting the kick drum track and going to the menu item Object Select Objects Select Objects in Active Track An easier way to select all objects for a single track is to double click in an empty space. I'm now going to the menu item Object Quantize Extended Audio Quantize Create MIDI Triggers from Transients 
As this command is rather buried in a sub-menu, you may be advised to create your own keyboard shortcut for this function. A MIDI object has now been conveniently added to a new track below the kick drum. I'm going to insert Superior Drummer for the newly created MIDI track. Now when I start playback, the MIDI part is triggering the drum module and can be blended with the original kick. Take note that when a MIDI file is generated, the MIDI notes always default to C1. As C1 is the default mapping for the superior drummer kick, it doesn't need to be changed in this instance. I'm now going to do the same with the snare drum. So I'm going to create MIDI triggers from transients for the snare drum track. The MIDI object has been created, so I'm going to insert another instance of Superior Drummer. But this time, I will need to change the MIDI notes to D1 from within the MIDI editor. Double click between the notes to select all of the C1 notes. Then use the up and down arrows of your keyboard to move the notes until they trigger the desired sound. If you can't hear the sounds being triggered when you move the notes, go to the Options menu in the MIDI editor and make sure Play Clicked Notes is ticked. Or use the shortcut Alt plus P. So now we have the original snare drum reinforced with the superior drummer snare. 